Some men say it's a legend. Some men say it's a myth. Some men say it's not happening. But the meme is now put to rest. And now is the truth. Splash Damage has officially announced to be releasing the demon itself. Dirty Bomb 1.0. My name is Frosty Espresso, and today I am here to talk about Dirty Bomb's past and what complications I have with it now and what concerns for the future. How's it going, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, hello. My name is Frosty Espresso, and uh, today I'm here to talk about uh, Dirty Bomb, or more just and more importantly, um, what's this video going to be about? And uh, before I get to this, there is a little bit of things that I do need to address before we get into the whole entire mess. Um, what I need to state is um, I am now officially in college. And when you hear those words, you're probably thinking... Oh shite, he's not going to be uploading as calm as calm he should be. Uh, that answer is yes, that's probably going to be the case. And I'm not telling you to unsub or anything. I, I'll still be uploading, just not as fast, but um, probably after this video, whenever I get this up, and this is the second thing, I want to do apologize in advance if this video does come out after 1.0, because I wanted to make this video not before 1.0 just to remind us of where the game has been for the last three years in its beta phase and um yes like i said i do apologize um college is more important to me than uh than youtube i just want to address that because uh for now i think it's worth my while to just uh go for my career and dreams that that are going to be worth my while than uh, YouTube because you guys know how YouTube is. Um, it's not much as a money maker as it used to be, and so, and, and the same goes out towards the Twitch. This and like I I don't know how many times I've stated this, but I do this for my own t out of my own time, pocket money, and etc. Because I enjoy doing this. But um, college and everything else has to come first. But uh, to get that out of the way, um, let's get into the spicy stuff. And uh, a little heads up, I will be indexing this entire thing because I don't want you to sit here for a whole hour and a half unless you really want to and be a trooper. You're more than happy to do so because I understand people are, are busy and don't want to listen to a whole entire like 13 page uh, list of you know my concerns. So uh, check the description if you just only want to look at just nutshell everything that i want to go over and uh if you want to hear my descriptions on everything you're more than happy to do so by clicking on the timestamps listed in the description and that's spicy stuff you may ask well <laughs> that would be the title of this video because um as much as i create this list over time guys i i just really wanted to let out my own opinion on my experiences with the game for playing it for the last about uh, two years and and I know some of you really want to hear my own version of um, how I feel about 1.0 and you're in luck because this is why I one of the main reasons why I created this um, list script and etc but the purpose of this video um, like I say is to talk a dirty bomb with its flaws and some of its perfections compared to most in other games but um i tr i'm going to try to stay out of targeting devs because personally they are great people but it's just i think we must agree that some actions um from them can be a little bit uh disappointing but um i just want you know just to make a lit i just wanted to make this list to show all the struggles uh, that we that I think that that we've had within three years of the game, but um, 
I really do want to state more of the negatives first than the positives because um, these are these are things that I'm pretty sure that would come the first to our minds about the game and um, there are positives to this game do not get me wrong there's definitely some things I want to talk about but I really want to get the negatives out of the way because I feel like it's much easier to get those out of the way my own my own anger out of the way first than uh, stating the positives but um, like I said just want to forewarn you one last time before I start talking about the game that some of the stuff could be personal bias and that is up for you guys to decide what is and what isn't without further ado let us start with the first thing in mind in one of the first things that comes to my mind is um, that it seems about overall times there's always been bad miscommunications and for like the longest time, I felt like SD can't seem to give a clear message on what they what they want to do for the game. And for the and for a good example of this would be for Steam trading. Even though sometimes sometimes they claim that um oh it's coming out here, but then they're like oh we're having legal issues there, and then it's like oh we may be having stuff here, but then they're like. Oh yeah, we'll just keep silent for it for a while, maybe, and excite people with some actual positive news. But, um, I felt like SD sometimes fails to communicate when they announce content that was supposed to come out, you know, our way. But they leave us, they leave some of us with some information under the rug. And some of those would, you know, not only include just trading, but, uh, some t the obsidians, like, um, for example, for that would be like you know, the Skyhammer proxy obsidian. Um, they barely told anyone, like a, uh, you know, about the uh, Instagram poll for uh, Skyhammer and proxy. And uh, sure, they developed. They did eventually did develop, which I will, you know, the uh, Skyhammer and proxy obsidians for us, which I will give them for that. But it took months later for it to come our way, which which brings me up to this. What? If you guys have been hiring so much um, staff to SD, then why hasn't the game developed any faster? And this likely cause is probably due to the fact that they're probably more worried about their Gears of War uh, series and the unknown project that they're working with the uh, wargaming. But not only that, but you know, events. Remember, uh, let's see here, Golo, good old Hunter. Remember that following events but mercs too the number uh, hunter he was announced um sometime in the winter and he was supposed to come out i believe in december with i think the nuclear winter update but um he was delayed two to three times later because they thought they had it but they never did and eventually came out what in like february to to bring in not only i will give credit this though he, w he was probably one of the most balanced mercs to ever come out, but this was also the update to bring back the horrible times of Alpha Phantom. And if you don't know what Alpha Phantom is, that's 1.0 Phantom, aka the o he the really OP state of um, Phantom. He came back, but then he got nerfed down again, and you know, blah, 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 etc. But not only that, but sometimes they uh, don't. Uh, give us the correct dates and sometimes I really wish um, SD would only announce stuff when it's actually going to come out they have a hundred percent confirmation that things are coming out because they sometimes they overhype things and then we're just we as a community just end up being disappointed but um, and for sometimes of these miscommunications, um, I won't lie, the community will, um, you know, they will respond negative. Sometimes I can blame them, and sometimes I can't. And sometimes I can't. For example, trading again, that is something that was promised. Weapon polishing. I'll be, and those are things I'm going to get later into this into this list. But um. And what could cause some of this is sometimes SD doesn't tell us enough. I feel like sometimes they lack giving us enough information on things. Which, um, 
it scares the living hell out of me because I just feel like people lose hope for the game and people are still a little bit doubting on you know doubting the game will be successful at launch just due to the fact that older players have older veteran players have been quitting all the time and they can't seem to keep newer players but um and some of the things that you know that tag onto this too is because you, they asked the dev series it seemed like they they liked avoiding questions that um really really question them as developers but um sometimes highly important questions like um you know like some of the main current issues that we're all debating about like trading and um you know like face it or or the whole nvidia thing we're asking these questions because they haven't told us enough but they won't tell us anything till 1.0 or simply it's not happening and speaking of stuff that's not happening or it was happening lacking content and undoing progress is another thing that i would want to talk about i don't know why but i f i feel like most of us could agree that it and this has been memed on i don't know how many countless times but the it seems like for sd the only way to fix the issue is just by removing it so it's not a problem in the first place like removing casual matchmaking ranked and and the, and the whole functionality of the party in-game party system like removing casual matchmaking i feel like was probably one of the worst moves that they possibly ever did because it also removed the whole party system which was was one of the reasons why newer players sticked around because they were actually able to play with you know by the friend that that, that may suggested them to play and or etc but to ranked, it seems like they have given up on ranked and they moved it to face it. Which um, kind of concerns me, but I almost find it almost as a good thing because most people use face it and they're going to see Dirty Bomb and hopefully it's a it, it would likely draw in people to play the game. But you know that undoing progress in your game doesn't help. It only brings up the issues you left unsolved. Um, and some other things that are quite lacking in the department is, uh, new game modes. For example, they're bringing back execution, but it's, it's been a thing, guys. I, if some of you are finding execution as a new, new game mode, it is not a new game mode. It's an old game mode that they retired because they didn't feel like no one was playing it. And they felt like that it didn't fit the game but it it felt like it had a place in the game because it was completely different and it was the only game mode that was different but things that this game i feel like sh should have and i felt like it will fully fit the game would be like king of the hill you guys already have like capture the flag mechanics so i don't see why not having a uh king of the hill kind of a game mode would be a bad idea and another thing could be like a capture the flag, but not just like with flags, but the good old milky jugs, or uh, more like maybe like capture the objective. Maybe there's like one objective somewhere, and the uh, one team needs to bring it into the enemy's base and deliver it to blow up their base or something. Like that would be a cool idea. Um, and maybe like some seasonal kind of um, like limited time events. I would also be okay with like some affected mode like you know around halloween or some themed um you know maps for uh the holidays i would love to see something like that but they say that they don't plan on making new maps so at least as so far as it is which is very disappointing another thing that this um another thing that's just lacking is a proper tutorial slash assault course because right now everything that SD is trying to teach the players from the actual assault courses to the videos which are all in all nice but I feel like all that should be combined into one entire course and or teach more than just what they already have for example there's nothing that goes over assaults, recons, or engineers. 
they make you do objective based things but as the wrong classes not only that but um assault courses you know for each type of class would be pretty nice like there's a medic uh assault course like you're trying to get the most revives and you know killing things but you know you do kill things because you're a combat medic engineers there's like maybe one where you know like the course it makes you have to repair a generator to open up a door then to quickly repair the ev and mow down uh dummies to, and you know sort of eject as quick as you can uh fire supports we have like you know like sky hammer with his but um it would be nice to maybe play with the other ones same with the same for assault i know it would mostly be based on killing things fastly and that would be amazing and of course um a recon based um assault course would be pretty neat and um more than all we should be able to swap you know different weapons and different mercs out and it would help people understand you know gun patterns because you don't learn by playing as easily onto a multiplayer match you learn easily by practicing by yourself with bots or uh like i said with the soul course but um and because of this veteran players um they normally do not help out new players because in general they expect people to know how to play the game and it's just it's just a gaming thing you know you can't really fix that but in the in dirty bomb guys it's like everyone is expected to know how to play because dirty bombs should not be someone's first fps and i hate to say that but due to the complexity and formula of the game it does not add up but i'm not saying that a new person can't learn it's just it will take them a lot longer to learn the game another lacking thing is i feel like is uh you know back up to the game to draw in people and what I mean by this would be like lore. I feel like the game lacks some, and there's only been really two, three events that really had any impact on how the game is. And those would be like Rogue and Vogue, Shell Shock, and uh, the Merc Surf. I consider those like two, to three to be um, lore based because it brought us in things about the Mercs. The people who run the two teams, Jackal and CDA, and then the the folks that run Merc Serve, and not only that, some of them brought uh, map lores and you know explain certain things. Um, and even though there's been recent updates to the Mercs bios, I just there's just some that's still that's still missing information like sparks thunder fragger they're all like missing date of births real names and etc like there could be more creativity also like with guardian um i mean there's probably some other mix that you could probably think of and another hot topic that i wish to talk about would be trading because this is something that has been announced and delayed left and right ever since of the nuclear winter update so far from what i'm aware of and what information I have, it's only going to be weapon skins from Bronze or Cobalt. And um, they only want to do special edition law trading once and after they implement weapon card trading. I feel like trinkets should also be on the list on the flyby, but ones I feel like that I could agree on would be something like ranked founders, uh, tapir stuff like those kind of se se special set of war trinkets and including the beta trinket that's coming out i understand why those shouldn't be but the thing that that ticks me off is that what if and when they ever do allow loadout card trading they only want to do special editions and if anything if special editions were paid to progress you know led to cobalt then why would you launch to trade special editions this wouldn't make sense because we had to pay to randomly gamble for and you know insane for some of the bronzes up through cobalts and expert elite prime cases not only that but some of us paid with those paid cards we may have scrapped those paid cards and if we paid the craft then we should also be able to give them away but 
all in all, I would be fine and totally support the idea of allowing us to trade all sorts of rarities, regardless of how they were earned. And I feel like if the since they're delaying let out cards of any variety, and if they delay any more to trading after 1.0, I have the slightest fear that they're going to be hurting the value of everything. But I could eat my words and be wrong. I'm just predicting a market here. But not only that, but I feel like rads should also be tradable because I feel like r since rads are pretty much the basic common ground currency um, of the game that people would want because you could do anything with rads compared to credits. But just like how Team Fortress 2, uh, CSGO, Dirt, whatever, they have keys. They're just one of the examples. But um, overall, I feel like so far with the going with trading is this. It's not how how we were wanting and expecting it to be at first. But um, all I can say is we should be at least glad that it's it's gonna be coming its way. It'll be here or it's already here or it's somehow some way still not. While watching this video, <sighs> in my next big issue with the game, um. Which, which is which has been happening for the last I don't know six months is the progression slash awards of the game because over time the, the, over time the, the the time I've been playing between my two years the game has just I felt like it's felt like an empty shell when it comes towards actual awards for the game stuff that you know they're easy to grind but you're likely to get garbage but you know you would get a lot more chances of getting stuff but it's now really more hard to grind for that certain let out card or that merc that you're trying to get your credits for or rads and uh and are saving up for events and who knows how much credits rads you need now for the next event because the last event that we've had on uh, the both like little let out cases was nuclear winter and um Honestly, I felt like it's gotten harder to get anything worth your while on an advancement crate. And just due to the fact that the content of them have just become more lacking in, this, in some of the stuff, they decrease the value that you get. Like like rads. You used, you used to be able to get almost up to 1,200 uh, rads, and that wasn't too bad, but you barely got it. But they decreased it down to like 400, and still with the same odds so it's kind of just like oh wow it's just a a, a face palm to the face it's like ouch uh, okay not only that but um load out cases i feel like those don't drop enough do, just due to there not being cobalts in them and etc so what i feel about load cases is I feel like you only get them about about halfway to almost leveling up which which to me that's almost like 5 to 10 15 games or shall I say probably more like around 10 15 games but who's gonna play 10 to 15 games a day to grind just for one loadout case to get one probably one bronze loadout card and I know that they have increased the um, the drop rate of loadout, loadout cases, which is nice and all, but uh, they, you're still equivalent out to getting weapon cases a little bit more easier, but weapon cases aren't something that I feel like people should be getting dropped, you know, getting dropped easily for, just due to the fact that it's just a skin. If you're just paying for a skin, then uh, getting a loadout card which actually does impact how well you do in the game and um a next thing some other things i need to talk about that's under my issues of progression awards would have to be contracts or previously what they've been known as missions because beforehand missions were short and simple you were able to do them usually within one to two to three games depending on the credit amount for a mission sure um they had you know they had certain classified mercs that you had to have in your squad but you know it did force players to pick them 
if they wanted to get that mission done but you didn't have to play play them you, you if you're able to earn the xp by a different merc you were able to do so like i said you just needed to have them in your squad however this just didn't work with um to newer players because they only have now only three mercs beforehand it was only two so when they didn't see um skyhammer aura adds their uh you know certain merc mission it kind of screwed them over not only that but the xp amounts were a lot smaller for example like certain objective support xp were up to like 4,000. except to now we're stuck with um what is it almost like up to like 33,000 some xp which is ridiculous some people cannot get xp that easily which is why i prefer the older system but not only that it didn't take you long but um the x the credit amounts were also pretty good too between the ranges of 500 to a thousand and then in the middle 750. it was very nice but you know it was randomly generated so you could only get between um you could get all three missions being 500 or you could get all three up getting up to 3,000 credits per three hours but three hours was okay but now since con contracts um came into play they removed you know certain mercs uh certain merc missions but they dramatically increased the xp required and the time to grind them and it seems like they're always 800 900 and a thousand credit missions which is two 2700 credits per contract rotation but not only that but it took time to generate it takes time to generate a token if you didn't like the missions you want and like i say they removed the three hour wait for missions as long as you have the token you could respin but like i said some people don't want to play a game all day long and and did i say the xp demand was pretty absurd Yes, it is very, very absurd compared to what it was before. N you know, it takes about over, for me to do all of my missions, it takes almost three, four, five hours to do a whole entire rotation of contracts, all just for a dinky 2,700 credits. Um, and usually the first and second missions don't take too long and you have to pray to the RNG that you get like a hundred minutes as your third mission or something very very basic. I mean like the highest I've ever seen for one of those contracts when they first came out was 69,000 XP and that was general XP. If you were good at the game this was not too bad of an issue but if you were a guy who only got like two to four thousand experience a match you have i say good luck ever getting those missions done which now i think that mission is reduced to now only about sixty thousand instead of almost seventy thousand it's still not friendly and my problems with just these missions are it's like you're still earning the same amount of credits but you have to grind for a way longer and I mean, I can't state this enough. It's just way too grindy for a daily mission. But, and I just feel like overall, not only is it not friendly to newer players now, but now they just screwed over and made this unfriendly to any player that wants to try to grind for anything in the game. And I feel like a simple solution to this is I feel like they should bring back the old mission system. As much as I hate to say it, I felt like the older mission system was much more basic and simpler and it didn't take much to to be able to earn your your hourly credits. And um, another thing about rewards, um, the face it and not only that but the beta awards that we were given within ever since of the melee madness update um my issue is sure the melee skins were cool and all but the problem was if they were supposed to be awards you know you would expect oh free shit yes they did give us bronze melee skins but to be honest 
it was kind of, uh, a, you know, it hit, it hit in the head when it was like, oh, wow, I have to, uh, oh, yeah, you want cobalt uh, melee skins? You know, the things that probably everyone wants? Yeah, that's going to cost you about one whole entire merc. Or should I say, yeah, it's going to cost you about two weeks of grinding when they kept rotating the uh, melee weapon. I think they, re they reshuffled all of them like once or twice, which I will give them that. But I felt like if you really wanted, you know, melee skins, you had to just pay rads, endless amount of rads, to get any of the melee weapons that you wanted. Um, and now, since they introduced also the part two to the beta awards, um, they announced that they were giving us a trinket, which honestly, I feel like is nice. I will give them that. It feels like uh, something that their beta award trinket would look like. But the other two awards, one weapon case key and only a thousand rads? There's not much you can really do with a thousand rads. If you really wanted to get like that, you know, obsidian card or whatever, that it's like, oh wow, I have to still grind like 3,000 more rads and I, the only way I can get them by playing is getting advancement crates, but oh wait. I stated earlier, you can only get from like 100 rads to only to up to 400 rads, and that's how it is at the moment. It's ridiculous. It's like good luck grinding for for a good spanking card or whatever you desire. Not only that, but I just felt like it was very underwhelming. It's like, wow, I played your game for two years for this? Just a, you know, you're just giving me two very small mounts? Of features that you recently added to your game I was like thinking there would have been like a obsidian slash special edition weapon uh, card or a you know giving giving us some kind of loadout case that gave us a uh, beta looking skin but uh, we didn't get any of that so I felt like the woods were a little underwhelming not only that but uh, like I said, uh, I can't stress this up enough over and over again. We ha we haven't really had any new uh, loadout cards that were special edition. And with face it, they're only giving us weapon cards. And that seems the thing that uh, the lovely folks at Smash Damage want to focus on more than anything. And it really disappoints me because, honestly, a lot of the weapon skins don't look great to compare to what loadout cards already have. A lot of the default loadout cards you know card camos are great it's like why do i need weapon skins on, all, on most of my my cards like the only ones that ever need them in anything are probably bronze and anything below that maybe silver maybe gold but like like the cobalt defaults the special editions it's like that's why we wanted them because they had cool awesome already weapon skins if anything, the only thing they needed was a melee skin, and that's all people care about. But uh, the only way you could really ever get easily in your hands was, once again, the melee madness update. You ha It was either you're paying with your kneecaps, or you're paying by grinding and, waste and putting a lot of time into getting just one melee weapon. And not only that, but uh, Face Set also has, you know, just like the rank seasons, there's just the uh, trinket, which I guess is cool, but... Uh, it's just, you know, another trinket for another weapon. And another core issue that I have with the game is definitely, most certainly most of us could agree on, is the balancing. For example, how they recently announced Merc stacking, of how they wanted to tackle it. And my problem with them tackling with Merc stacking is um, they introduced punishing players for having more than one of the exact Merc on your team. And my problem with this is, it's really just punishing new players with their freebie mercs, and which those are uh, Aura, Skyhammer, and Bushwhacker, and those that are wanting to play the mercs in rotation, and those who have, like, people like to have their mains, like mine's Thunder, for example. If, like, Thunder's in rotation, it's a there's a likely chance that you're going to run into a game on your team that already has, like, two or three different Thunders, and... 
it's going to make you suffer because there's a 50% increase onto all your abilities. So Thunder's Concussion's like, you know, every like 15 seconds. Well, because let's say you have uh, two of them, it's going to be every about every 30 seconds to toss one Concussion Grenade. Which, and, that, and you can see where this problem is going. You, it just makes your team less effective with their abilities, which is going to be most likely a team's downfall. And I feel like my solution is they should stop working on this. Just in my own opinion, I just feel like this is super unfriendly to all players. But something I feel like they need to add in is some kind of indicator. An indicator that tells you that you have too many of this exact merc on your team or your team's lacking a certain class. Uh, you know, depending on if you're attacking or defending or ex vice versa. And another thing that, that I feel like that has been a problem always with is just in general, just the just the player skill balancing. And um, my problem is, it seems like you either get into a match where you're going to easily win or then very easily lose. Because for some reason, there's just for three years we just can't seem to ever fix the imbalancing and i feel like a solution to this is when you know like i feel like they should shuffle teams by levels but the problem with that is the sd keeps adding in and removing in you know showing people's levels but i always felt like levels indicate to me you know what people that i need to watch out for and making sure they're doing their their role and you know to give up tips and stuff because uh, you know i'm a nicer person and all but i can't do that because i can't tell who's new and who's not in game it's frustrating but another thing i felt like that could possibly fix this and sure like like another thing you think of too is yeah sure the small population doesn't help with you know bouncing stuff but that shouldn't give the excuse when a full match when a, when a match is full if you know what i mean but um a simple fix i felt like since um you know i understand there was like you know there was a purpose for rank and all but i feel like maybe a casual rank that's hidden um would you know would help balance out the game by oh yeah this guy secretly performs as a gold officer while this guy it performs like another gold officer but they're two in the same team but that team is yeah let's say all team the rest of the team members on all both sides are like bronze you know like whatever x bronze well ship the game should force the one of the gold officers to move to the other team and i feel like maybe that should be a different kind i mean that's why we had casual matchmaking right and i and that was basically i feel like the pure beauty of what casual matchmaking was was uh missing but um with that with the of course with all that stuff here, here comes the long part, and there's definitely character balances needed. There's always a character balance needed. And um, the longer that some of the mix stay in their current states, I feel like they get worse. Just because SD fixes one minor thing doesn't mean that fixes the, their problem. And more if anything, it's more the recent mercs that I have issues with. Um, for example, I'm going to use Javelin and I'm not trying to be biased here, but um, The Merc balances may sound biased just be forewarned Like for example Javelin my number one issue with her is she is the only Merc in the game with a one-hit KO ability and it's just the only one you and With with that in mind. It's like I should be able to easily dodge it and you can't, especially if if Javelin decides to run up to you, pulls out a rocket, and kills herself in the process with you. And another thing that doesn't help is that her rockets are too effective with the splash damage. It feels like the splash damage is almost a direct hit. And due to the fact that the damage is so high in the rockets onto just mercs, it doesn't matter what health pool you're at, especially now with the nerf of Rhino's health pool, you cannot easily survive a rocket. And I understand it's a rocket, and 
it should not give the excuse that it should be the one and only ability that could easily kill someone. The only thing that should either is someone standing still in the, in the way of an airstrike or one in the way of the, fire, of the other fire supports and or a uh, headshot from a sniper rifle. I would understand for those logical reasons. Not only that, but you know, um, it might, I know they've recently have updated the um, the objective damage multiplier and I feel like it's recently been a little too high. For Rocket could easily almost one shot now a 500 HP generator, which which is problematic. I feel like there should be more there should be multipliers for different objectives. But um not only that but in general, I she feels like she's like Fragger but better. And that's and that's definitely something you could go against which I which I would understand your opinions why but I feel like for javelin some simple fixes is definitely reducing the splash damage the splat at least the splash damage of her rockets up to maybe doing a, a almost a direct prox proximity mine because I feel like if a rocket definitely directly hitted you it should be able to one shot you but if it's splash damage it, that's something you shouldn't be able to easily die if I was supposed to be in assault That's why I I played it like you know like an assault or just any merc in general with a higher health pool I, It's like the reason I'm playing them is to be able to have a higher survivability in a, in a gunfight Not only that, but I feel like the rocket launchers um, cooldown I feel like shh, full, I, I feel like the, the, the time for you to be able to cast another rocket should be increased um, overall, uh, for just also to tag on with the blast radius, I feel like, um, the, 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 yeah, the radius of it should maybe be decreased down to almost like a direct hit team fortress, but that's, again, that's just my own personal opinion. One other merc that I do have a big issue with the game would be, like, Guardian. The problem with I have with her is... Because we don't have currently ranked anymore, she was basically designed and confirmed that she was more supposed to be based around of a friendly fire game. Because she, since she doesn't heal, her she's supposed to, what she's supposed to do is to heal her teammates, is to kill and knock them down and bring them back up with the uh, revive the healing pulse, and. The problem with that is, I'm pretty sure a, a teammate is better when they're when they're up than down to heal them. I could, because you're as a medic, you can't do everything on your own. But because of this, the medic formula in the game now just becomes null and void. Um, and personally, in general, she's too weird of a hybrid of a medic, and she's more of an anti-fire support. Um, I feel like her drone just makes the whole pace of the game slow down and Like again, I can't say this enough She's the only mech that does not heal and only revives and I feel like that just breaks the whole formula of the game And I feel like some solutions to Guardian is I feel like she completely just needs a complete Rework it's either like make her like an actual medical class or class of move her to the fire support line but she's like, you know, she would become like the uh, Phantom of Recons, if you know what I'm saying. And if they go down like a medical path, I feel like the drone should be like almost like a personal healing device. Now that doesn't heal more than like an aura healing station and no more than, no more faster than a uh, Sawbones hitting you with a, uh, <laughs> with a med pack. Um, I feel like the drone... The, the team color spear and destroyed projectiles should be completely be removed and should and maybe possibly give that mechanic to a different merc or uh, Just completely scrap that being in the game Um, I feel like her drone should also be replaced like This should be like a like a halo icon towards a uh, target that the drone is healing and uh the duration of the drone 
should last long as it does now. And if they pick the anti-fire support, then what they need, un, what they need to do is the same for dealing with you know dealing with projectiles. But you know it should also be able to reflect a Kira laser beam, and uh, her drone should be less spammy, meaning they would there should be a complete inc big increase on be her being able to toss her drone and possibly even increase the 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 uh, health of the drone even more and I know they've recently increased it by by a good couple tens but I feel like this should be a little bit more um it she should also have her ability to revive be removed because she wouldn't be really classified as a medic but possibly she could become the first merc to deploy small ammo kits Instead of small healing kits like sparks and another an one uh, like one or two other examples I really want to give out there because I don't feel like going over all of them But another big one. I think most of us could agree on is phantom and I'm gonna give you the short story phantom Just needs to go back to 2.0 because 1.0 state was so broken in alpha It was just com it's like once a phantom was in the game one side was completely screwed and once Phantom was on both sides, it could be, d depending on which Phantom's more skilled, that's the team that's probably likely to win. But um, he was brought back um, after uh, his 1.0 state because he was removed from the game to be retweaked and they brought him back. And um, this was honestly, in my opinion, his more terrible state since um, he wasn't too OP in my opinion. Um, because he I felt like he took more skill to use because um, his cloak armor was his only way to be able to be quite effective because they messed around with the transparencies of Phantom he was more visible and more noticeable back then and sure there was some noisy glitches then but compared to his 3.0 1.0 states it it's quite more tolerable in his 2.0 state. Oh, and over time, he uh, he he's he was more and more modified. He took Thunder's EMP, but because of this, his more stealthy way of attacking, like a recon, was quite um quite reduced down. <laughs> but um, when Phantom came to 3.0, I really felt like shit hit the fan. Yes. We finally got the EMP separated from his cloak, but I felt like he became strong as his 1.0 state because just pretty much about everything was wrong. Everything that was wrong in his 1.0 form, it came into 3.0, but there was no promised, you know, decloaking animation. He was pretty much about muted as all of them in hell, and you couldn't rely on spotting him as easily as any recon except Red Eye, be yourself thus. It's just not taking any skill to get kills with with his broken stealth mechanics and I can go on and on on what's wrong with Phantom but because of due to the complaints he was brought into what he is now and I feel like just like I said overall his 2.0 state was a lot better because his I know that SD was trying super hard to get you know a cloak based merc bounced off in a fast paced shooter because in a fast paced shooter I should be able to notice a character then um, one just randomly creeping up onto me with a cheap with a cheap and broken ability. And not only that but the texture pull size stuff um, could easily have been avoided if again it was brought back to his 2.0 state. And not only that but the chances of fighting you know him now in a 1v1 situation and him is likely to win. And um, and again, texture pull size, the texture pull size thing, it completely breaks the mechanic of. It completely breaks him useless, because it doesn't have cloak, cloaking armor to protect him. He can be sought in sight and then instantly dead, making his ability just quite, quite useless. Um, and I can go on and on and on, like, one other thing I do want. To, I, I feel like this is a um I, I do want to bring this up of thunder because recently 
they have announced that they're going to be balancing out some mercs like Nader, Artie, Amy, Vasily, and like I said, Thunder. And if anything, I want to state one thing about Thunder. My problem with Thunder, even, and I know I'm, you might think I'm Thunder biased or anything, but I'm going to give you the nutshell of him. His concussion grenade is not a concussion grenade. You guys have left him in this state for almost uh, a year and a half or, or so. His concussion grenade is really more of an annoying flash grenade that can just just flash someone in miles and or not even flash anyone up close. His concussions just really distort the screen for a very short time and not really affecting um not really affecting other than winning in a 1v1 situation and that's all his concussion could be good for without pushing in with this team. Not only that, but the grenade can only guarantee, yeah, it can pretty much only guarantee you a kill if an entire flash crowd, otherwise it's just your runaway tool and that's all it's good for. And my problem is, he, he used to be able to EMP like I stated before, but they gave it to Phantom but um, the EMP gave him more, more utility choices. If you were going to flash a team, or you're going to flash electronics, so your team can take out the the enemy marks. But um, he's another thing too is he's the only a bit, the only assault merc in the game that doesn't have a damage dealing based ability, just making him more reliable on fps skills compared to the others and i feel like a simple solution is i feel like you guys should bring back some old state of his first release giving grenades that allows him to actually concuss people not flashing not flashing enemies but also bringing back the ability that um that slows down the dpi of mouses and um the emp should be brought back and giving him and this should be only be like two three mechs that should be allowed to emp and speaking of balancing which i know recently they also announced and claimed that they're going to be looking at weapon balancing again and one of my most and probably uh, most of us could agree on is definitely shotguns my entire problem with shotguns is that they just don't feel like a traditional shotgun compared to other games. And what I mean by this is, you know, high spread, higher damages, to, you know, to most guns, especially in critical hit areas, and definitely slower fire rate for the cost and having to get up close. My problem with shotguns in this game is, yes, I just felt like they've always been a disappointment to someone, just it, regardless of all phases. And sure... All of us have a certain point of where we thought shotguns were okay, or or not, yet. <laughs> My current issues with shotguns, they are low spread, they are, I feel like the range of them are too still effective, the fire rate, I feel like, is still, I feel like it's too high, I, there's, I feel like little to no aim punch when it comes towards, you know, aiming them around, which I mean by this is you know, like spread, and I know recently they have nerfed around with, um, you know, they, they increased the, uh, spread with jumping, you know, it didn't really affect the spread with the recent bound, one of the more recent bound updates, and not only that, but the most important thing is, why do shotguns not have a critical hit multiplier? And I feel like the solutions, yes fix everything I said before like you know turning up the spread and then maybe maybe possibly adding extra pellets for each of the different shotguns they should definitely in decrease the shotgun range to being close range effectiveness because <laughs> isn't that why we have secondaries right secondaries um compared to shotguns they have better range effectiveness usually you'll have a machine pistol pistol or whatever or poss possibly melee weapon if that's the case but I feel like shotguns should shoot slower than, you know, the average melee weapon, which is a Beckhill combat knife, but they shouldn't shoot slower than a sniper rifle, meaning I feel like, um, sniper, sniper should definitely be at the bottom list for, you know, most DPSs, which would be, you know, the bolt action ones, but, um, 
shotguns should maybe shoot just a little bit faster compared to a bolt action um, sniper rifle and they should definitely add in a multiplier to headshots if anything probably up most to being 1.15 maybe as a multiplier to like the head but they should definitely keep along with a negative multiplier when shooting the legs and lower and I feel like they should increase the spread jump for sure from what it currently is to possibly maybe doubling it just to be extra sure and I th another thing I should say um, these two weapons which have recently came out which is the Chassis and the Herzl 2k um, this one this one can be dependable if you really want to consider this bias or not I feel like this is a more biased opinion but um I feel like the Charcy, for example, I feel like it's the Bishlock of Assault Rifles, if you know what I'm saying. If you know how the Bishlock is, there's not too bad of spread. You could easily, very easily control the gun. And my problem is the Charcy has Assault Rifle damage. And um, I feel like there's not really enough kick and stuff. Because I feel like I can click on a head easily with the Charcy and easily mow down someone within a couple of seconds and not only that but the merc the one and only merc that welds this gun has a higher hp pull which makes it a big pain in the rump to take down and i feel like a solution to this could possibly increase in vertical horizontal recoil by maybe like 15 20 percent possibly reducing the magazine size by maybe five to seven and increasing or possibly decreasing the base damage by like one or two and my problem with the Hertzl 2k is it's like you know somewhat the same boat as the shot C but it's like the hawk affair of assault rifles meaning this thing shoot I feel like it shoots so fast for what it's able to do for you know DPS per second and I understand it's supposed to be an assault rifle but um it's the fastest automatic or yeah, uh, <laughs> RPM, which uh, it has, I believe, 640 with a base of 12 damage. And the closest to that would be the Timic with a damage of 14. And meaning about, about every five shots um, shots in with, with the Herzl 2K, you could outdo the Timic. And the Herzl 2K, I feel like it does not have um, enough recoil. But that, again, that could just be me. But... If anything, I feel like, in my opinion, they should decrease the fire rate from 640 to almost 600 or 580, and maybe increase vertical horizontal spreads by maybe 5-10%, um, and decrease the magazine to 30. Or, um, a second idea is maybe decrease the mag size to 25, but increase the, uh, the spread before by maybe double, but the base damage goes up to maybe 13 and and once again i'm very well aware that um they're going to look at some changes again for shotguns melee weapons and machine pistols which i do hope they look into melee weapons i'm fixing the uh melee system because it seems like uh melee weapons sometimes are just a little bit too strong compared to a gunfight and then another of course another subject that i'm pretty sure most of us could agree about is definitely glitches in the game for example, you know, the EV, hitboxes with melee sometimes just doesn't register. There's still map collisions at some parts, and then uh, the UI sometimes can be buggy, and there's always seems to be a different UI issue all the time. And I understand that just comes apart with um, some of the coding. But um, a big topic that I think most people won't talk about um this is one that I have one of the more bigger concerns with, which is RNG slash pricing. And in my opinion, this is debatable depending on, you know, unboxing different kind of crates, whatever it is. But really, I have my number one big concern, and I state this all the time, is weapon skin cases. Because I'm going to repeat myself two or three times here. Weapon skins are not, I repeat... They are not worth a loadout card. And what I mean by this is a weapon skin that goes for $4.99 in store, I feel like is not worth equivalent 
to one prime case that is depending on where you are an extra couple of cents okay they are not worth that especially with the drop rates in general unboxing weapon crates you're just very from what i've experienced you are very highly going to get a bronze and scarred worn than anything else plus um i feel like that there's a secret percent in the um in conditions meaning that you're more likely going to get a scarred than one etc and i feel like odds are too stacked for the price and based on my experience guys if you if you haven't watched any of my unboxing videos, then I'm going to nutshell this to you. I have unboxed almost about 225 weapon cases, okay? And a lot of these were bought for $4.99 each. And about 155 of them, out of the 225, were bronze. Which kind of makes sense with, with the percents, about being about 70 some percent. 50 of them are about silver they're like but the, my only problem is they're likely in bad conditions there's only a couple few of them that may be standard reform or pristine meaning you know a tolerable or acceptable condition um in golds i've only gotten 16 at my start though i haven't i had the shittiest luck of getting golds but surprisingly uh and sadly only about five of them are like in a mint condition that i would use the best part about this i have received zilch zero nothing of kobolds which you would think in about 225 weapon cases in you would expect me to have one or two kobolds due to the 0.7 to 1.1 percent chance in kobolds and and to be honest how many of these unbox skins do i really use if anything i don't use more than maybe like 10 or 20 of them meaning i have about 200 weapon skins that just sit there and brought in my backpack all i'm gonna have to say is this guys I'm happy that though that these pathetic cases can be found more often and now that we can get keys with credits because if anything if I was going to unbox any more which right now I've lost my mood of unboxing those I am I'm I feel like I'm probably not going to ever box those until I see better chances um, in some other conditions I just my problem is it's like i i'm not spending another cent on those worthless weapon skins because i stated before that some of the a lot of the skins look better on what comes with the default cards special editions it's why we want them right for their exact weapon skin oh the only ones that are worth your while i feel like are, are some of the some of the silvers most of the golds and of course kobolds because smite points right <laughs> but my problem is you, we won't be able to polish because they were they removed off the roadmap trade-ups um there's still no confirmation if we're still having trade-ups or anything like that or just simply giving them away to other players so it's like what's the point of weapon skins and i know that we can scrap them for fragments but I would never scrap $4.99 per skin that I've paid for to get little to no fragments and the fragments are about equivalent to one loadout card. It's And not only that, I would never even scrap a special edition loadout card. And, and, you know, and special edition is just it's another whole deal. They are not worth a single golden fragments. You can get a gold anytime, you can't get a special edition at only you're able to get them at a certain point in time and that certain special there's so many different special editions it's like it shouldn't even matter i feel like those are something you shouldn't be able to scrap those are something you should be able to trade isn't that why we're making trading a thing 
And if anything, if people sh should have been able to craft special editions, they should be worth possibly a cobalt or anything higher. Just gonna leave it at that. Um, and if anything, if they want to fix back to weapon cases here, I feel like they should be only worth two dollars and four nine cents, or shall I say, they should split the prices in half for one weapon case because it's just a skin it doesn't benefit you what will benefit you is having a different loadout card and possibly for unlocked ones they should only they should only make charge you possibly a dollar fifty worth in rads for the key and i will state though again i do approve weapon keys for for fourteen thousand by some credits as this is a good thing because a lot of games don't offer giving you both parts by just playing meaning a, a you know a case crate whatever and then the unlockable thing to open it i will give sd those points speaking of the matter um my another whole big issue with um weapon skins obsidians special special editions and just like craft in general um I feel like you should be able to equip many weapons such low cards as you want like in Merc in the Merc decks. It's because simply enough in games. Usually it's like as long as you have one you should be able to equip to, you know to all. But for some reason it's like if you wanted to equip a certain skin like some so, some sort of weapon skin like example some M9 to two different Mercs and you only have one you can only give it to one. And it beats the whole entire purpose of having a skin, right? Not only that, but for loadout cards, maybe you want to, you know, change up two different forms of running a loadout card. Well, you can't unless you have two, and that's what, and that's kind of just a little frustration when it comes towards having many different customizations. Um, hopefully, another thing too. Um, I like I can't stress this enough. I hope this new um, new loadout you know loadout cases with special editions in it and all that stuff but I feel like also too you should be able, like I said I feel like you really should be able to polish and trade up weapon skins but again SD announced that they removed move it off the roadmap and and I feel like personally it doesn't make sense that you're able to scrap um weapon skins is oh and also web special edition weapon skins for for about worth one gold again i really hope for like an old trade-up system like um you know like counter strike old offensive with their skin contracts you know to get or you know in general maybe they should just get rid of conditions all in all since we can't polish up and make our weapons better another whole thing i wish to argue about is um obsidian operatives my problem with obsidian operatives um is when they were first introduced i was completely fine with them you know we had Artie, fletcher and stoker and those cuts sure they it they, you know back then they used to um usually give you not like the best loadout card in obsidian form but you know you're, you 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 want to rather have the super rare looking card out in play but uh and that's what those cards were but um i just felt like ever since after that they just started releasing obsidians left and right left and right and um i felt like it just break the whole per like being purpose of obsidian cards especially when they rebooted the um original obsidian operatives plus following with phoenix phantom etc and they're permanently in the store so i i feel like in my opinion obsidian operatives um when just the second wave of them really just broke the special feeling of owning them but um in my opinion, for the recent editions, we had Skyhammer and uh, Proxy, right? Um, but some of them, I feel like, just don't fit in the game, like Skyhammers and Phantoms. Um, like with Skyhammer, I feel like it's alright. It's just, you know, 
hit the head his head area just feels weird and he just feels with like the whole goggles and just not having like some kind of hat or something you know they can look a little different compared to his founders his founders looks a lot more accepting to the game it looks more rebelish and all this stuff like it really fits the game but like phantoms obsidian 2 it in my opinion has to be the worst looking i hate to say it um, it just looks like, you know, a brown rag with black, you know, black painting armor. And I, and I know it's supposed to be prototype armor, but I feel like his default looks more prototype armor than anything. And, um, and one thing that most importantly, what upsets me the most about the Obsidian Operatives is the Obsidian weapon skins for them. Like, Proxies from Rogue Invoke looks amazing. The whole bloodstain thing. It looks unique and awesome. The founders have the cool different like woody camo. But the Obsidian Operatives got got like a reboot of iron uh iron camo, but darkened down black and it looks ugly. Except for Phoenix. And in my opinion, I feel like they need to to just update all those cards and give them all that phoenix um the phoenix weapon skin it, it's amazing that like the orange glowy confetti looking gun it looks amazing and i feel like it look a lot amazing on all the other different guns because almost i just feel like again it's just like wow great another thing that really ticked me off too about the obsidian operatives was the second wave of them they gave us the way better uh, loadout cards. And it's like, oh wow, nice knowing of uh, voting, you know, the first gen of those cards. And like again, and I, say this, I can't say this enough, they're permanently in the store. They're not special. So again, what's the point of buying the Obsidian Operatives? And I don't feel, to me, I don't see people buying them left and right. So, it's like, my whole main issue with them. It's like, you get them any time. They're just not rare at all. And it's like, before you go, you know, the, the original three obscene operatives, like, you know, Fudge Art and Stoka. And the thing is, too, some of them, they, they didn't have the greatest loadouts. But, they were like any other traditional obsidian before them. And, SD, like, promised that they were rare and limited. And... They revived all all five mechs, and that with you know with Amy's um, obsidian, with like the way better loadout cards like Fletcher's A31. Like people prefer the A31, the BL instead. I think it's the BL382, and then you have Artie with the D43 when he first came out, and then they gave the one more pleasing B73. I just feel like they shouldn't revive them, cause I and another thing too is it's frustrating to tell if someone has an older version of the card because some people are not going to pay attention to symbols and people don't really understand symbols to cards and i know you guys are trying to make it easier for people to understand it but it's just some of the stuff is not clear enough and another thing too i do want to state oh and and one thing too phantom's previous card was the bl he had the bl63 as one of the other three cards they rebooted the BL-63, meaning, what's the point of having the first generation of the BL-63 Obsidian for Phantom? There's not a purpose. Although, one thing that I do like about Phantom is his melee weapon, uh, which is the Katana, on all the, the Obsidians, they have a different melee skin. Oh, that's the only thing nice about Phantom. You know, it's him, just like that. Like, they could have made all the melee skins for all the obsidians like phantoms i would have been fine with that but nope that's not the case and uh speaking of which going back to crafting um for the longest time the loadout i mean this has been addressed by sd so many times and so many times over and over by the by the community that the, that the trading just the crafting system is just a bust at least especially the new one it costs 25,000 credits, for example, or, uh, yeah, 25,000 credits, um, to craft a gold. 
and 2,000 some fragments, which I understand for fragments, but just why is it costing me almost 50,000, you know, for a cobalt? The old prices were better and more reasonable, and not only that, but the old trade-up system gave purpose to keeping, you know, like bronze, silver, gold, you know, gold and cobalt cards, because you were able to use those cards as placeholders, even though they were a crappy card, you could trade up to get a, a new and better card. And, I, and again, another thing I just, uh, I just can't stand is you being able to scrap special editions. Like, you, I'm sorry to offend anyone, but it's like, you have to be stupid to scrap them. It, so what you gotta duplicate? Wait for trade to come out. And they, and they told people that they were not going to allow you to do that until trading came out. But they just, it, just slipped out of their head and they're just like, nope, we're gonna release that. And it's like, what the hell? And I can't stress enough, just bring back the old system and modify the credit costs and etc. Maybe work around with fragments with, you know, bringing in, you know, allowing us to do something with weapons. Allow us to craft weapon cards. Like, just, it's so frustrating with all these extra fragments I just gotta have left around. And of course, some smaller things um, that I that I feel like that has de depreciated over time is toxicity, but um, in a nutshell, it just seems like depending on how how the game state is, the toxicity level seems just to rise. But um, I'm not really going to target it much other than um, I feel like for veterans, uh, you should have a common courtesy at times to please just be nice to to newer players. Unless they're being trash to you, I understand why you may or may not may want to help them. But, um, one other big thing too, like, I feel like another thing that would help this game improve would be, like, having some SDK. If you don't know what that is, that's pretty much, you know, it's a source pack thing that would allow people to create stuff for, for the game. For example, like, new wep new weapons, maybe new mercs, maps, game modes, maybe fix stuff, you know. But, like, enough of the negative stuff, there. I just want to think positive for this game, and and I and I won't lie, it was hard for me to kind of think of positive things. But there is good things about this game. For one thing, for sure, this game definitely has a unique style for an FPS. Um, I just I feel like Dirty Bomb is one of a kind as for now. But um, just a combat style for you know for warning, uh, highly dependently of controlling guns with their accuracy. And not only that, but you know, you have like really personal uh, characters that I feel like, you know, they may have enough lore, but sometimes I feel like they need more. Like, I want more out of them. I mean, like, we have Edgy Boy Facility. We got, you got, you know, Gay Lawyer Nader. You have, you know, you have Skyhammer with his pals with it, you know, with the airship that drops down those daddy strikes. And the guy who just doesn't press E enough. And then you have the Chef Pancake Master and the Mechanic with the Missing Eye Proxy. And then you have Amputee Nanobot Phoenix. And then you got Thunder. Thunder Sparks. These two characters have like this such mysterious background like you want to know more about. And not only that, but they're just lovable by some people. It's great. But no, this game has definitely improved within three years. Another thing too. um, Teaching play teaching players to play the game there definitely you know at start there definitely wasn't a way of teaching players but at least there is a way you know you got m recently you know the more newer more interactive fun tutorial from Mercserve. you got mia telling you more things or telling you some things that the jackal man won't tell you but then there's the jackal man telling you things that me you know that may 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 not tell you but and then recently, with her, you got more clear videos to help you understand the game in a more visual and fun way if you learn visually than touching around with your keyboard and mouse to, to learn. Not only that, but uh, definitely the game's graphics have improved for sure. Um, you're, and you're able to put in custom, you know, you're able to edit your HUD and put in custom crosshairs. There's definitely been some better rendering settings. Um, we went from, you know, 32 to 64 bit. And then we got DirectX 9 to 11, but you know, that's, that could be neutral somewhat how they feel. 
you know, and the game looks pretty good for it just being free. And another thing too, the maps. Most of them are quite, well, I feel like most of them are quite balanced enough. Or sorry to be say, stable enough to feel like, you know, a good map. I say about most of them, not all of them, of course. I mean, there's some reduxes that need to still come around, or I feel like some of the reduxes need to get out and bring back the originals. Like Dome, for example, I prefer the original Dome. Um, and, and Terminal. Um, underground, I feel like it feels great because you don't have too many people camping up on the roof spot compared to what it's going on now. Usually it's defenders holding off the roof. Now, now it seems like there's more attackers holding off, and it's great. It keeps me on my, you know, on my heels to watch the first objective. And uh, I will also include rads. Rads has definitely been a thing that um, helped, you know, not just newer players but you know veterans uh, to purchase stuff. Um, than rather having, you know, to grind credits and getting their things for certain events but you know they could get rads instead to just get what they want and i know it's just another way of just putting it's not put you know it's like in-game money in-game money compared to directly purchasing something and you can't do anything else with it you know um and and though i did state before that they you know messed around with you know, rewards in a bad way, it's also in a good way that at least now, before, there was no advancement crates at all. It was just you leveled up, congratulations, that's it. They added those in about a whole year or two ago. Um, the credit boosters, they've been improved from counting from hours by playing to days counting down. Um, I feel like the removal of lead and irons can be a good and a bad thing, but I'd, I'd say the only good thing about it is now people can't complain it's paid to win, and neither was it really pay to win in the first place, in my opinion, but, you know, th there's no longer zero and one and two only, you know, perk cards. Now every card has three perks. So every, each card has now an advantage and disadvantage against each other for equal reasons and in you know events that give you a chance to get items you normally have to buy like you know currency events cases and trinkets you know yeah I mean some of the events had you know their own currencies and stuff but the reason two events um the two more recent ones I'm thinking of is Jackal's Eve and uh Nuclear Winter there was some good bundles to get you know the, the um certain you know event currencies and or bundles that helps you get stuff easier and it felt like you know, it was more accepting around f towards all players and like i say some more customization things i could think of top of my head i mean you got the merc decks Th those are new you could you know customize build your own decks with a certain loadout card with a certain weapon skin what trinket um in i mean weapon skins i feel like they definitely bring more customization to those who really want it and the crosshairs again and and now also recently rentable servers but i feel like there is some still lacking abilities and some of the stuff but it's okay it's just i feel like there should be a little bit more prudence there and the one of the most important things about the biggest pro i have with this game is the community we are quite strong for a smaller populated game I mean, we got several artists in many forms. We have, you know, from the cosplayers to digital and physical pieces of, you know, like art to content creators like myself on YouTube and then there's those on Twitch. And the most important thing is you guys. While you're still here watching my videos to others, to playing the game, or even snooping around the game, it just shows you you have some sort of dedication to Dirty Bomb. Which brings me to my overall message to close off this video, to close off my entire month's work. Dirty Bomb is a beautiful game with so much potential. I feel like Splash Damage should not let this game be overestimated, and they know it quite well. 
I just feel like they need to do the part as game developers and take more of an experienced um, com you know, community members like their PTS consideration and you know it, I feel like there should be more equal distributions towards you know what people's sayings are they should st stop blaming things for their own excuses because it's like you're going to ruin your reputation to the public eye and you can already claim now oh they already did that well n with dirty bomb they haven't done it quite yet I, I feel like my opinion they have not done it quite yet and it's up for again you to decide but we the players we only ask kindly for like years for some of these changes because we are your beta players we're the people who are trying to help create your game and most of the time i feel like sometimes we're ignored but sometimes you listen to us but then you overdo stuff that we never asked so it brings everyone with frustrations like with the merc balances glitches or anything to make just Anything to make the game friendly to all players. And, th and I feel like this game's only hope to if you if we're really wanting to increase the popularity of this game is do the marketing role for them. If if you know what I'm trying to say. Like, seriously, try bringing in people like on your Steam list or just people that you know out of the virtual world into this game. But I know they've been recently working with NVIDIA and all this stuff that's in face it. It's like that's great and all, but where's the main marketing? Not like that, but you know, there there needs to be a re redo on the uh, <laughs> E3 trailer, right? Because a lot of things are way out of date, like Kira having an SMG9 and Turtle having a shotgun. Um, how some of the abilities work and all that. And not only that, but the, the only way to really make this appealing to people is fixing the main core issues that we've been dealing with for years. Because we want the game to be friendly to all players in all areas of the game, from the customer end to, to just playing the game. Just, what I mean by customer end is if I was spending money in the game and all this stuff, to playing the game. Like, I need to feel like, you know, I have an equal chance of killing things compared to others. Well, not to get others, but everyone should have an equal chance of killing people based off of what situation. I know some things can't be, and I get it. But, I guess the thing I should end this off with saying is, um, just to remember that, um, no matter what state this game ends in, we should at least be thankful for what we have. But... If anything, it would be amazing if SD does any anything at this point to solve any of the issues that are still present with the game that I may have addressed or I may have not have addressed that you feel like that should be fixed. Hopefully at least one thing on that list of yours and mine will be fixed. It would just be absolutely amazing if SD would just do anything to solve its problems. depending on stuff that develops over time any of the issues that that come back or they're still present and that's how i'm going to end off my uh entire review of dirty bomb 1.0 so um if you guys want to uh you know in the comment section if you guys wanted to um judge how I did with my uh, review rant you guys are more than happy to do so any questions comments concerns or uh, or anything because I'm well aware because uh, by the time I've, I uh, actually got done recording all this it's uh, 1.0 time and I know some things have changed so um, again this is frosty in the future just letting you know this um, I like to thank everyone for this everyone for the long long journey of uh <laughs> i think or more importantly we can thank ourselves for being here all together arming up <laughs> and uh appreciating uh dirty bomb as a beautiful game as no matter what the st state of the game it, you know it ended up in i'm pretty sure we had a favorite moment with the game and 
once again, I I want to thank I want all of us to thank ourselves for sticking here together. As um as 1.0, I hope we are able to do our roles as beta players and or if you're new and you're watching this review to see what the game was like before. Um I just really hope that you learn you guys, you know, maybe you know, learn some things. But all I could say is um I'm 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 ex I am excited for 1.0. I just think most of us are probably twiddling our thumbs and that's okay. I completely understand. As um, you know, this is a game that we invested all of our love and time and appreciation into. So, um, I'm going to leave it off like that. So, this is Frosty Espresso saying, uh, thanks for taking your sweet time to watch this, uh, long review. And, uh, I'll see you guys probably, like I said, if this video comes after 1.0, I'm sorry. But, uh, like I said, I'll try to upload, um, much, much after my, um, fall uh semester hopefully uh, you know in college i hope um i don't worry guys i will be playing like you know once you know one point it comes out i'll probably you know probably play and record but i wouldn't be able to make any videos but like i said once i'm out of my fall semester and all that maybe uh i'll be training some videos left and right so uh this is frosty espresso saying thank you for being so dedicated to watching this video giving you a sweet time this is just saying uh once again thank you 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 i'll see you guys uh in the future have a good day